Hey folks, how's it going? I received a letter uh, yesterday from a viewer of the show who had some questions about what they could do in university to help them basically get an awesome internship and break into the industry. So I wanted to show you that letter, talk through some of the points that immediately came to my mind, and then also give some feedback on a resume they sent over as well. So let's jump over to that. So here is the, ooh, let me, maybe I can make that a little bit smaller. Here is the letter itself. So I changed her name also, just for privacy. But it goes like this. Hello, my name is Jamie and I'm a freshman and studying computer science at University of Alabama. It's uh, not much of a party school. Uh, however, um, while doing some research on game development, internships, saw your video, and I wanna go to the games industry for middle school. I'm studying Calc 3 and on track to take linear algebra. I'm also studying C++ but have had experience for two years of C++. I'm doing leak code, also how to crack the coding interview, and I want to know if you have any tips or advice for people who may not have enough experience to get an internship. I also attach my resume for feedback on that, and I would love for you to look at my LinkedIn maybe. Okay, so I wanted to break this question down into three parts, which is basically, hey, I'm in a university, how can that help me? The next one is what can I do now that I'm in university versus uh, you know, if I, if I don't have enough skills to get the internship yet. And then the third one was resume advice. And I actually asked her to send over an editable copy. So we've got a sort of anonymized uh, resume here in Word, which we could jump into in just a bit as well. But I wanna jump into those first questions first. So the first one is what can you do with university? Like how can that help you? So I know, um, so, so first of all, you mentioned that the school is a really good game school or that it's very technical. And I think that is a resource you should try to harness to whatever degree you can. So one of the reasons why that's really cool to be in a school that has a game community is you probably have an alumni network of people who went to this school and have some affinity to the school, but are now working in the industry. This, uh, if you have anything like a, uh, alumni directory or you can get in contact with the school uh, section that does that I mean they definitely keep tabs on these people to ask them for donations right so if they're keeping tabs it might be good to reach out and ask for some advice or um, even like some help right for the internship search and almost always they, they say this for investors if you go seeking money you're only gonna receive advice and if you want to get money you have to go seeking advice Right, and it's the same thing here for this kind of relationship, right? You don't necessarily want it to be transactional uh, or so transactional that it's just like, hey, give me a job. Instead, I, I think it would be a great idea for you to reach out to other people who might be in the alumni network and ask a similar question to what you asked me, which is basically, you know, hey, here's where I am. I, I'm trying to get started. What's your advice and stuff like that. Also, specifically, if you can try to meet with them for uh, coffee would be the equivalent pre-corona, but now maybe like a, a video chat or something like that. I think that would be great to, to hopefully foster a relationship between you and other alumni and get some experience and make some friends in the industry, right? LinkedIn is great for you to make connections and LinkedIn has a requirement because uh, I, I know you mentioned it. So I want to say LinkedIn has a requirement where basically you can only connect with so many people and then they put you on a cool down and then like a week later you log in and, and now you can connect with more people again. So you basically just want to Mac, you want to go to the companies that you want to work at you want to connect with as many people as you can until your you know meter is on cooldown, and then a week later you come back and you connect and you connect again, right? So that you hopefully very soon have thousands of connections so that you can reach out to whoever you want to. And the way LinkedIn works, if you're familiar with it, is you can only connect with people who are one degree of separation away from you or something like that. And so it really does help for you to start building uh, your branch out now so that you can reach many different uh, leaves of the tree, if that makes sense. So that's the first thing, you know, um, meet with alumni. That's a great resource. The second thing is you're doing these university courses. That's awesome. So I did take a peek at the resume already and I wanna say there are, well, well, I, I won't go into that just yet, but I wanna say that the most important thing for you is to find projects that you could point to and say, I did that working with these people, specifically working on this part of it, okay? If you are part of this university uh, that does games, that's really awesome. If you can collaborate with somebody who is not an engineer, 
that could be really awesome because then you can have their great art maybe on top of your really good code and that could you know make an awesome pb and j sandwich combine those together uh, otherwise if you can collaborate with another engineer you could team up and, and build something that's you know more than you could do solo particularly if they're a little bit more advanced than you they could teach you things and there's stuff that you learn in the process of development that will never really come up when you're in just doing a university course so i would say as much as you can try to chase some side projects or some independent work one of the things which i did in my first year of university was i made an indie game with a friend of mine who i had from high school and who would have known that that game would be successful but it reached over a million players and is on my resume even today and it really does help especially in those early roles so I would say you should try to do a side project with a very, very strong emphasis on publishing it. It does not matter if it is big or ambitious if it does not ship. The most important thing is you make something proverbially very small, like a Flappy Bird or a, a, not a clone that wouldn't be looked too well upon, but something akin or inspired by Flappy Bird, like Flappy Bird meets... Um, I, I don't know, uh, Star Fox. That might be something interesting. And you make a little app, maybe, or an itch game. You publish it, you put it out there, and it's completed, and you can put that on your resume. And so this sort of gets a little bit into your second question, which is, what can I do now? So yes, you don't have a job, but that doesn't mean you can't make games. And I would highly encourage you to seek out your own adventures and to start doing these indie work, indie projects, where you can be collaborating onto something larger. Again, the most important thing is that you ship, is that you get something out there that you could point to and you don't, it, it would appear you don't have a portfolio yet. Video games are a very visual medium. And so unlike traditional engineering, where I think you might link a GitHub or you might just have a resume, there is a stronger emphasis in engineering, particularly the kind that I do, which is gameplay engineering, for you to have examples where that you can point at uh, with the visual component as well. So it really does help for you to create a portfolio when you have the chance. I use Weebly. I think it's amazing. Um, there's other websites as well, like Wix and um, I don't know, other stuff like that, where you can create a website. You have experience with HTML, so you can code your own website. But I would say, honestly, uh, don't worry about that too much. The most important thing is you just make a website. You don't, it doesn't need to be coded by you unless you're applying to be a web designer, right? If you're not applying to be a web designer, they don't give a shit if you designed your website because it's not applicable, right? It's sort of like saying um, if, you hand if you hand wrote your resume, uh, unless they're interviewing you for handwriting, they won't care. You might as well type it. You know what I mean? Um, so this is the kind of situation for the online portfolio if you want to do it uh, custom. Okay, so that is what you should do now. Yeah, so it, it's a question of the making the solo projects. So that helps with the experience side. So when you say to somebody, oh, do you have any experience? You can now come to that answer with, oh, of course. I've worked on this indie project. We made a game. It has over 500 downloads, which is not that hard, right? Um, especially if you could put like... 100 bucks into advertising. Um, it's got 500 downloads, five star reviews. I made this game from start to finish with some other people in my class. Um, I did all the engineering for it and I did it in Unity. Um, so, so this is something that you'd be able to say then to answer that question. Now, there's another piece of the puzzle, which is not the experience, but the actual skills, which you'll find is not ex always correlated, right? Like a, a lot of people who make a lot of projects are not always very talented, right? When it comes to actually solving the tough problems. And so that is something you'll have to, to train independent of your experience. So the experience, we have the indie work, but for the training, for the practice, this is where your intuition to pick up the book, Cracking the Code was right on. Cracking the Coding Interview uh, by McDoyle or McDonald. Um, her book, Gail, great book. Cracking the Coding Interview is a tremendously great book. Leak Coding is very similar. Um, and they will definitely help you pass an interview for, you know, a web company like Google or Facebook. When it comes to the video game industry, though, you will need to go a, a little bit more than that. Unfortunately, Making video games is a little bit more complex 
than most engineering jobs. And so you will have to have a very strong background in math as well. Um, and some, and a little bit of understanding of problems that are very unique to game design. So for example, uh, collision physics and, uh, some of the, well, we deal with a lot of data and in, in a very fast paced environment in a way that other engineers won't. And so you will have to train specific skills for that worrying about things like cache coherency a lot more than, uh, maybe a traditional engineer. So if you want to look up the term data driven design, right? So you've probably heard of object oriented design or object oriented programming. If you want to look up data driven programming or data driven design, right? A big proponent of that is Mike Acton, who I, I think is on unity right now. There's a few talks that would be really helpful there. I think you should look into as well. It's a really good idea for you to look into GDC. Uh, GDC is the Game Developers Conference. This is a yearly uh, event where the top game developers and some of the bad ones too will get together and chat about the games they're working on. And so they have uh, published videos of a, a lot of their content for free actually on YouTube. So you should look that up. GDC Talks and it's sort of like a tech talk uh, where they will go in depth on some of the problems they've solved. And so particularly you want to look at the engineering ones just to build up a little bit of that vernacular, a little bit of the parlance that will come with the job. So you understand the sort of problems they're dealing with and a little bit of the lingo as well. So, uh, that will help. So GDC, uh, you're doing cracking the coding interview. I also wrote a, a book on this subject. Well, it's not, it's not really a book. It's more of a reference guide but I would highly recommend you check that out as well. So this is basically saying, okay, so you've studied cracking the coding interview, but what about um, all of the stuff you need to know specific for game development? And so this is a sheet I made, so you could check this out. Um, basically just, uh, just Google, um, I'll go from the beginning. Okay, so you, you just go to my website, misadventures.net, go to tutorials, then scroll down, to, oh, is this showing on the screen? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I'll put it right here. So you go to misadventures.net slash gamedevlearn.html, scroll down to da, 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 da. a game dev engineer super duper study sheet, click that. And then you wanna scroll down here and click access. And so this is actually a sheet covering everything that is not covered in cracking the coding interview that you still need to know. And it's pretty popular. There's there's pretty regularly a, a lot of people who are lurking. Um, but what you want to do is there's actually a section called review questions. Yeah. So you go to review questions down here and you just want to quiz yourself on these and see how many of these questions you could do. You need to be able to do all of them with relative fluency. But this is a good place for you to figure out because right now you're, you're just beginning, right? You're a freshman. And so you have the challenge of figuring out what do you not know, right? Because right now you don't know what you don't know. And so if you go read these questions, you read this document and you start listening to GDC talks, you'll realize, oh, wow, I don't know anything about that topic. And suddenly you'll prime yourself to learn about it. Where right now it's sort of like, oh, game development, like what is there to learn? And, and you have to spend some time learning about what it is you can learn, if that makes sense. So I think this is a good fast track for you to give you some questions, which will identify maybe some areas you may be weak at this time. And linked in the top here is the most common question, which you definitely need to know, which is uh, pretty much the dot product. And because that's gonna come up almost always. So those are, so that's my advice for your second question, which is what can you do now? The answer is for experience, indie projects, and for skills, cracking the coding interview, uh, yeah, certainly. That's a great book. You should read through that. Lead code, a little less helpful, but still very good. And then you want to move into C++ as soon as you can. Particularly, this book. This is a very good book. It's called Real-Time Collision Detection. It's orange. It's called The Orange Book. You want to buy, you want to buy this book and you want to read this book. This book is very good for learning C++ collision detection um, and, and just general C++ uh, game development problems. There's another one.
This book, Scott Myers, Effective C++, uh, whatever is the latest edition. This is very good for learning C++. There is not a better book on C++. He is amazing writer. One of the best writers I think in the world at technical stuff like this. Maybe I, in my opinion, maybe better than uh, the, the other guy. Um, I, I won't say, but basically very good book. Okay, I would read this book and this book. This one might be a little bit too hard right now. This one should be approachable. Um, I would start with this one and, and do this one to the extent you can. What would be really good is to read my reference sheet and when you get stuck, go to this one, which is a little bit more in depth on some of those questions, okay? So I would recommend you do that as sort of self-study coursework. Okay, so I think we answered all the questions, right? So we talked about um, how university can help and then we talked about what to do now. Again, the main thing is just make games. Uh, there's one more thing I wanna highlight, which is that, um, well, I'll, I'll just say it like this. In video game development, you will come across problems probably problems that other people have faced, okay? And some problems are very common. And when you have a common problem, you might have a common solution. And they have a term for that, which is called patterns, which is that when you see a problem come again and again, you might apply a pattern, which is basically this common solution for that problem. And so uh, some people are kind of opposed to patterns, but I, I think you need to learn them anyway, and then you learn when not to use them. But if you go into the sheet here, right here, you'll see there is programming patterns and there's a whole section of all the patterns that you will need to know. So this is something you should probably make index cards on and start to learn these and get familiar with them. And I've actually linked the books. So if you, if you need help, you can click on this and then you can go to the actual uh, article where it will explain the thing. And all of these are coming from this book game programming patterns which is a textbook and you can actually buy it it's in print um it's by nystrom so that so that's actually a pretty good book uh, if you want though you don't need the book you really just need the cue cards which you can make yourself um and then there's another book called gang of four which is very uh well known in c plus plus in general and so the gang of four book goes across patterns as well and this page right here combines the game programming patterns patterns and the gang of four patterns so you have them all here in this reference sheet. If, if, if you need more, uh, well, you shouldn't. So that's that. Okay, so we've answered all the questions. Now we're gonna go to the resume. How are we doing on time? Okay, 15 minutes. So now on the resume, um, we could talk about the resume for hours. We really could. I mean, there's so much in the art of crafting a good resume. Uh, I would say you will learn the most by practice. And what I think is a little appalling is that a lot of the best um, a lot of people will make their resume with no reference, you know, like they will have never seen somebody's resume except for their own. You don't want to make that mistake. You want to see who you're competing against. And I think I have a link for that. So the other site you should check out is tinyurl.com slash hacking games v2. While this sheet covers how to pass the interview, this is completely dedicated to how to get the interview. Okay, so this is exactly the book you need. And it's 35 pages, so it's not too long, but I would read through this entire thing if I were you. So this is how to break into the games industry. This book is gonna cover um, how to create a portfolio. It's gonna cover business cards. It's gonna cover uh, competing in competitions. It's gonna talk about portfolios. Here's a lot of information on creating a portfolio. Here we're gonna talk about creating resumes. I have a tutorial, it looks like, specifically on creating a resume, so you could read through that. So here's the resume on the left and how we turned it into something a little bit more beautiful on the right. Uh, we could do the same, like look at your resume. We could probably do the same thing to make, to make it look more beautiful, a little bit more striking like this. Uh, particularly, I think we need to move away from sentences and try to get more bullet points. I mean, I see you have bullet points, but then you, you talk like for three lines. So we're, we're going to try to make that a little bit more concise uh, where possible. So this is, a, this is a really good resource. So I would, I would check this one out as well. Um, but there's one thing in particular I wanted to call out here that I think is very useful, which is that... I actually have a list of a whole bunch of really good resumes for you to compare yourself to. Because, um, 
damn, I can't, I can't seem to find it right now. Let me see. Okay, so you may have heard of uh, Carnegie Mellon University ETC. It's uh, one of the most prestigious master's programs for game studies. And so if I just, I'm just gonna Google it. So we'll just do it manually. Okay, so here's my search bar. I'm gonna do CMU ETC. So you go here, then you go to students. Okay, great. And now you want it. So these are all the people who you're gonna be competing against in the job market, okay? So when your resume goes on the table, whose resume is it next to? It's next to Brandon Badgers, okay? And we could actually, okay, man, that guy looks a little angry. But we can go at a, to this guy's page and click on his resume, actually. Click download resume. And then we can see, okay, here's Brandon's resume. This is who you're going to be compared to. There's no better way to evaluate your resume than to look at Brandon's and say, where am I better and where am I worse? So this is the, this is the strategy I think you should employ. If you're not getting answers to your interviews, you need to say, okay, why am I worse than Brandon? And what is Brandon doing in his resume that's going to make, that can be applied to your resume to make it look very nice and sexy, right? Uh, obviously, he also went to CMU, <laughs> which, you know, um, but f for the most part, um, you should look at these resumes and, and see how you can improve, right? Uh, I think that's a good idea. Look at my resume too. See if you could tear that apart. Um, not all these resumes are good, right? Some of these resumes suck. Um, but... If you look at their website and you look at their resumes, this is a really good point of reference for you to compare yourself. So uh, not that you know you should compare yourself so much, but that's what's going to happen. So maybe um, this is a good point of reference, let's say, for you to compare. Okay, so that's just another thing that you should be doing. Um, now I want to call out some problems that I'm seeing with this resume. The two most common problems I see in resumes are the following. The first is that Instead of listing achievements, they list responsibilities, and there's a little bit of that going on here. And the second, particularly for game engineering, is that too often I see a resume, and I've looked at many of these to help candidates and students alike, which is that they would give me a resume and it looks something like, hey, I'm a programmer, but also I'm a designer, and also I'm a UI engineer. And it's like, hey man, pick one, you know? And I don't see a lot of that going on here. I don't see like, oh, I'm a designer and an engineer. But I do see many different technologies in engineering uh, in the same place here. So when you list languages like this, which is not a terrible thing to do, you need to be very sensitive to what you're implying. You've listed HTML, then CSS, then JavaScript, then Python, then C++. Now, that would be fine if you're a web developer, right? But if you're a game developer, your C++ needs to be first, and probably none of this should even be there. Probably none of the other stuff. Um, maybe Python. But the HTML, CSS stuff is really irrelevant, and I think, like, distracting in a bad way if it's there. Like to say, you know, I've been so much of a web developer, maybe they will say, oh, this is a web developer, not a programmer. So I think you need to be a little bit careful with that, particularly with languages that are very high level, like um, like HTML. So I think JavaScript is probably closer than Python, um, but that's something to consider, okay? The other thing is there's a lot of different kinds of game developers, right? So there are game developers who do C++ all day, in Unreal Engine, and there are game developers who do C-sharp all day in the Unity Engine. You should look at the kind of games that those people are making and try to determine which kind you want to make. Because if you don't like games that are in C++, like God of War, um, Fortnite, and you want to instead make games that are like Unity type games, like mobile, like uh, Switch games, maybe some, some of them, um, very indie kind of games are going to be in Unity. Uh, you need to sort of figure out where you want to focus because to go into one will preclude time that you could spend going into the other one. So if you want to go deep on C++, you know, AAA game engines, God of War, uh, Naughty Dog, those are the kind of games you want to work on, then you really need to dive into the C++ end, download the Unreal Engine, 
And when you're making games, it should be with C++, right? If you want to make C++ games, and don't interpret my previous advice to make games indie to start doing Unity C Sharp. No, that's the, that's the wrong direction. You need to go into Unreal Engine, which is also free, and you need to do C++ games if you want to be doing C++ in the long term. So make sure you're setting yourself up so that before you start to move, you are pointing in the right direction. So, uh, so I would say that is the first concern, which is that you should probably make sure when they read this, they think, oh, you're a C++ woman. And this other stuff, right? I mean, Microsoft Office, it was a technical skill in the 2000s, maybe in the 90s. But I think now is irrelevant. If you can't use Microsoft Word, they will, they will be very concerned. So I think just cut it out, right? Brevity is, is to our benefit here in some cases, in some cases. Um, so now I want to talk about the first thing I mentioned, which is this, um, this idea that often resumes, I will see them with responsibilities instead of accomplishments. That is the case for this one, where the, the, ver the active verb here is par participated. Participated is a flaccid verb. You know, it's, ve it's very passive. Uh, to say you are a participant is not to say much. So we want to rephrase this. And I'm just going to do one because we're already at half an hour here. Or we're at 25. All right, I can put a little bit more time into this. But um, we basically want to rephrase this so that it sounds more like an achievement. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'd like you to apply that principle to the other elements that you have here. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to teach you uh, how to fish with this. Okay. So we're going to rephrase this. So first of all, um, this should be a title, right? So this is the position. This is where you worked, right? Google computer summer science Institute or whatever science summer Institute, remove the summer, right? Then it doesn't sound as temporal. Um, the computer Google Science Institute. That sounds pretty cool. And what were you there? You were an engineer. So this now it kind of looks more like a job if you if you phrase it like this, right? It sounds like, oh, you had the position of engineer at the Institute. So you want to em employ a little bit of a uh, of finesse when it comes to this stuff. Uh, and there's a lot on my guide there uh, where, where you'll learn more tricks, but um, I'll, I'll just keep going here. So definitely we're going to kill this word. It's, it's not good. Um, so what did you do? So you participated in a four week intensive computer science summer program for achieving for smart kids and you did a JavaScript. Okay. So here's what I love about this project based JavaScript, right? You want to list the projects. So if you created a cool JavaScript, uh, AI, what you should do is instead you know, pick your best project and design it around that. So let's say one of your projects was a video game. Okay. We're going to rephrase it around that developed. Uh, let's list this designed and developed a, um, and interactive, well, I don't want to say interactive computer game. That sounds terrible, right? I'll say, uh, you know, 2D, you created a 2D side scrolling um, uh, a mobile game, maybe, using Java, using JavaScript. Now, what I actually like to do is I like to pull the technology and sort of put it up here in the main thing. Because often they are going to be searching for those technologies. I don't remember exactly how I do it. Um, here, I'll, I'll pull up my reference. So this is my resume. What I like to do is I like to say, you know, what the title was. So where the company was, when it was, and then I say the title, and then I say what technology it is so that they don't have to look for it inside here. Um, so that might be an interesting thing for you to explore. Or maybe what we could say is you're a JavaScript engineer. You know, that, that might be a nice way to phrase that. And then later you'll say Unreal Engineer or Unity Engineer. It's, it's one, one approach. There's a lot of ways to do this. So you designed and developed a 2D side-scrolling mobile game using JavaScript. Now it's already um, implicit. Or you could say 2D side-scrolling 
yeah, mobile game. So you did uh, high achieving students. All right, all sort of. That. So Google Engineers is cool. So collaborated with Google Engineers and other students to um, optimize code and ship to over 100 players. Okay, so this is an idea. Uh, again, it depends on the project, but you could probably see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to take what sounds like a participation medal and turn it into something tangible that you've created. I participated in a Pilates workshop versus I have a six pack. You know what I'm saying? This is the difference. You need to say, I participated versus this is what I have achieved. So this is what you need to do with all of this to try and convert what looks now like a list of responsibilities into a list of accolades and achievements. So that that is the technical approach you need to make on this resume. I think it is the most important thing now. Um, and then with respect to making it design, make it look a little bit more beautiful, I would say um, check out my guide on creating a resume. I go over a bunch of places where you can find free templates. And then I would also say check out the Carnegie Mellon University students and see if any of them has a really beautiful resume. You will know it when you see it. Most resumes are white paper with black text and maybe a little bit of underlining and bolding going on. Very boring. When you go through these students' websites, you will see some of them stand out. Some of them are just beautiful resumes. You go to some of their portfolios and it's, it's gorgeous. And I think when you find one that stands out that you think, wow, I wish that was my resume, make it yours. Download the design or use the design in, in your resume and then uh, it, it, something similar to it will become yours or you can be very inspired by it. So, you know, there's no copyright on resume design. So feel free to, to steal all the shit you want. So this is uh, some notes here. Anything else? Let's see. I'm just going to see if there's any. So th that's sort of the high level thing which we need to do here. And it applies to a, a lot of this stuff. Um, but I, I want to see if there's anything else to call out. So you, you'll. So here's the thing. Like they want to say, OK, so you know how to program. You have a degree or you're studying. But have you made any games? That's what they're going to be asking. And if this is a game, you should, even if it's not a game, you should say it's kind of like a game or some sort of like interactive media so that it sounds like a game. Um, I think this robotic stuff is kind of cool. Like maybe you can, like honestly, this is so dope. You made a robot with C++. Like, I don't understand why this isn't your number one if you want to be a C++ programmer. Why are you putting the JavaScript in front of the C++ experience? Oh, who fucking cares if it was two years ago versus yesterday? This is what's applicable. I think they want to see what's applicable, right? The order, the dates, the relevancy, it doesn't matter as much. Many times people will omit job experience that is not applicable for the job they're applying to, All right? So my resume is not exhaustive. There's internships I've done that I didn't include on the resume. Some of the stuff you may want to go because it may be distracting versus having a very concise, very clear, you know? For example, um, being a marketer is probably great for like some sort of leadership development, but it's probably irrelevant for being a good programmer. Uh, being a tour guide, probably not useful, right? Um, it may be interesting, you know, I think maybe it can be interesting to put somewhere else as like a hobby or something, even if it was a job. One of the things which I've employed is that I've tried to keep my jobs as my main quests, put them in the top here, 
I say main quests, right? It's kind of silly. It's a little quirky. It's like, oh, it's like a video game or something. And then for side quests, I have my teaching games and indie games. Now, you'll notice that the side quests are not that far from the side, right? They're like, they're pretty relevant. But the reason why I sort of squeeze them down here is because I want them to say, oh, okay, well, what is his hobby or things? And then he's like, oh, shit, it's even more games, you know? <laughs> and I think there's a danger with that because you, you don't want them to think your whole life is video games. Um, but I, I, I think there is also a little bit of fun for the potpourri aspect at the bottom here. Like, oh, you know, you do sports or you're a tour guide and stuff like that. I think that really does not deserve its own line item. I think it could be included, but right now it's like a little bit too self-important. I don't think it's that relevant. I, I, it might be removed or very, very seriously abbreviated. I think this deserves to be up here. Designed and implemented code. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. That's very close to the, the verbiage I was using here. That's much. That, that's a lot better. I like what you're saying there. That's awesome. With C++ using libraries with teammates to allow robot to move a joystick. You know, this is one of the most important things is expressing your experience working with team members. You know, especially if you have some degree of leadership or code ownership, uh, this is great. I would say, if anything, you should expand on that because that's really awesome. Uh, this is good stuff here. This is really good. Um, tutoring students. What are you tutoring them? You know, is it uh, is it Spanish? Mm, who cares? Is it how to code? Oh, oh, that's interesting. You know, that's what I'm thinking about. It doesn't say, so, you know. If it was, if you co if you taught them Spanish, ninety nine percent of the time, and one percent of the time there was one student who needed help with algebra, you know what we're doing? We're making this algebra. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because because we don't want them to think we're a Spanish tutor. So y you need to be a little finesse there, right? Uh, what is this? Cave mapping through lidar and ID scanners and three D modeling software. What's the language here? Is it C++? If so, I want to know that. Under guidance of Dr. Hare. Who knows who Dr. Hare is, right? I mean, forget it. Um, cut all that out. You know, it's not like they're going to know Dr. Hare. It's irrelevant. Um, you know, this is a lot of words. A lot of words to... The important words, like C++, are missing here. And the unimportant words, like Dr. Hare, there's too many of them. It's, it's too many words to say too little. I think there's some brevity that needs to be explored here. Um, be really careful with acronyms. Almost always, they'll have no idea what you're talking about. NCWIT, I certainly don't know what that is. Um, aspirations in Computing Award, okay, now I understand. So you're a good computer person. One of 11 students selected for Kentucky level. Okay, I, honestly, I, I still don't really understand what that means, um, but it sounds impressive. So maybe there's a better way to one of 11. Oh, one of 11. Uh, you know, that that's kind of sounds like you are like there was 11 uh, people applying and you are like the one chosen, right? Which is not that impressive. But I think what you're saying is only 11 were chosen out of all of Kentucky. So what you should instead say was like, um, you, you know, like you, you need to inst like if 11,000 people applied from Kentucky, you need to identify that. Like it needs to be chosen. It needs to say something like, "I was one. I was chosen from eleven thousand candidates." Versus saying, "I and eleven people were chosen." You know. You know what I'm saying? One of them sounds much more impressive. Craft Academy Citizenship Award, one out of sixty students. Out of sixty students, I I don't know what you're. It's the same thing there. I'm a little confused of which it is. Whether it's you are the winner or they are the winner. Who is the loser? I think that's my question. Um, science and engineering fair. Oh, shit. Wait, what? You got first place in a computer science and engineering fair? That's incredible. And first place in science and engineering fair of northern Kentucky. Wait, that's so fucking cool. This needs to be way higher. <laughs> that's really dope. Yeah, I would say, like, you know, like, your first place science engineering fair needs to come before a Spanish tutor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but here's how you're going to do it. Instead of saying this is an award, rephrase it as this was a project you did. So let's say your 
because clearly you did something in your fair, right? What was it? it? Was it this? It may have been. But if it wasn't, then have that project listed here and then include as part of it, you know, one of your bullet points is first place in science and engineering fair of Northern Kentucky, right? So it's all together versus down here, the awards being like a separate thing, right? Um, so that's how I would structure it if I were you. Um, relevant coursework, intro to programming C++. I don't want to say intro because it makes you sound like a noob, right? Maybe, uh, but we can't say advanced. I would just say uh, C++ um, programming design. I don't know. I don't know. Make it sound less intro. Uh, who cares with the and websites again you know with the website stuff i know you have a lot of experience with the websites it sounds like html it's not going to be relevant here um unless you're making websites which is also a cool job for engineers but if that's what you want to do it's not game development so be careful there okay i think i've given all the advice i can um jamie uh you know obviously that's not your real name but uh i wanted to say thank you for asking for these great questions and I hope that this is, and also remove the phone number from your resume. Instead, that should be a link to your portfolio. Um, I hope that this helped you. It's a, it's a, it's a real pleasure of mine to, to give back in whatever way I can and to help uh, candidates improve their resumes. And so I, I receive a lot of these, but people do not always allow me to review them uh, in video. And so I'm so happy that you, you let me do that so that hopefully these principles and learnings can be shared and other people can benefit from these ideas as well. So good luck on your training and your job search and your career. And uh, definitely let me know how it goes, okay? If you receive an offer or um, you get an internship, I'd love to hear about it. And if you want uh, to talk more about the opportunities you're, or challenges you're facing, as always, uh, feel free to reach out at any time. Uh, thank you and good luck.